this lab is a revised from uh, SQL injection attack lab 0, uh, 2.0 provided by SID. SID labs 2.0. And we are asked to complete uh, task 1, task 2 for this uh, part 1. And the other tasks, we are going to complete them in lab 12, the last lab. Open the lab menu. If you have any uh, problems with your Docker container or image, please check this uh, Docker menu. The lab setup is used to set up all the containers. The lab 11, I already uh, have it there. Okay, there is a folder we need to remove it with a sudo. We have two images, one for the website, other one for the database. During the lecture, I demonstrated an example and it uh, didn't work. The reason is I, I didn't realize the database is now in another container. I used the example from seed 1.0, so that's why it uh, didn't work. Right, now let's go into the lab setup folder. You see the two photos of the image. DC build to build the image. For the password of the database, and go inside this image, check its uh, doc file. Right, you see the password for my SQL root is DES, and uh, user name with seed is password is also DES, and uh, Database is the uh, SQL lab users. Okay, the images are built. Now we can bring them up. You see, up. Okay, two containers are running. Open a new tab. So we can use a uh, Docker PS find the two container, one for the database, the other for the website. Now let's check the tasks we are going to complete today. Today we are going to uh, complete select uh, statements update. We will do it uh, in our next lab. SQL injection prepared statements as a countermeasure against the SQL injection. The lab setup, this is a website. We already set up the mapping, right? the mapping in, in our ETC hosts in our previous labs. You may double check it here. ETC hosts. You see this uh, this uh, name is already set up, even though it's in CS or FLAB. 
in the database lab, we here we didn't put the injection lab, right? the SQL injection lab. But the name is not right. See the lab sqlinjection.com. So this is not updated. So we need this uh, this name, and this name is is set up in this CS or or F lab CS two point zero. Certainly, you can make it more readable. Add an atom and put it here. Okay, we can open this uh, seed server to have a look. Open in your tab. Right? This is a simple uh, web application. You can find the source code here. In the lab setup, in the second image. Here you see the code here. The auth code. Index, log off, and so on. This website is actually this part. As it says here, you may you may need to do and uh, followed by an uh, editor, for example, G editor, to modify this etc host file to add this line. We already have it in one of our previous lab. The container setup and commands. We have done this one so many times. So I assume everyone you're very really familiar with this uh, container setup and commands. The MySQL database, if you don't need uh, consistency, you may remove this folder. Here, this folder is uh, saved in the lab setup. In the container is uh, under this uh, folder. You check the lab setup, right? So my SQL underscore data. If you don't need consistency, you can run this one to remove it after you pull off your container. The application here you can see uh, we have uh, some pre populated. Users name, employee ID, password, salary, birthday, and so on. So you can access from this uh, web page. For example, the admin password is seed admin. You will see all the users in the database. The administrator can see all the users. If you just log in as a user, normal user, for example, Alice, only the first letter is uppercase. See the Alice. You only see herself information. This is for a normal user. Well, this simple uh, website used to demonstrate SQL injection attack and the countermeasures. Task one: get familiar with the SQL statements as we are practiced during the lecture. Here, you need to practice by yourself. On this uh, database, the, uh, this database SQL lab users, it contains a table called credential. So, a database, a single table. We can log into uh, the interface, MySQL interface. Here we want to know the database is in one of the container.
I use doc ps to find the containers. We have two of them. Open a new tab. Now we use doc share to go inside the database. The database contain. Now we can follow the commands in the lab menu. MySQL dash your user is root dash p password is DES. Now for those databases, those databases we can use share. Databases, right? We are required to access this one. Use this SQL lab users and each statement with a semicolon. Now we can use show tables. There is only one table credential inside this database. We can use describe. This to see the schema, right? you see the schema here. ID name, EID salary, and so on. You can select all the records from this uh, database. I made a typo, there is no S. Okay, here are all the records, and you can see the password is the hash code. Actually, it's a Shova hash code. We can find in the source code of the web application. For example, this one, and copy it. Have a new tab. Here, that one is the Alice password. Hash code, right? If you use show one sum to calculate echo without a uh, new line, at least her password is a seed address, right? Pipeline into this show one sum to calculate show one. Uh, Hash code or checksum. You see, it's this one. I can paste the one I just copied, paste here. You see, they are identical. Right? So, this task one is an easy task. Here, let's just save a Subtasks, login and uh, find the database and use it, find the tables and share all the records and so on. Now for task 2, SQL injection attack on the select statement. We know the select statement is used to select or query records. That is a login web page, as we just demonstrated. For the source code, you can check this unsafe home.php in the lab setup. Here, I want to open it here. And the unsafe home. Here it says uh, the uh, yes, it's an unsafe home. You can check how it uh, connects to the database with uh, PHP source code. Start a session, get the username, get the password, and calculate the show one hash code of the password.
the password is saved in the database. When the user login, it will check where this uh, information are in the database. Once it succeeded, we use GetDB function to create a SQL connection. Here you see the host is this uh, 10.9.0.6 is the IP address of the database container. During the lecture, I didn't uh, change this one. That, that's why I, the demonstration during the lecture didn't work because I didn't realize this. I use an uh, example from C 1.0. Both code are identical. You can see uh, use this function to create a connection. The second uh, one is this one, even though it's failed, but uh, as an object, is uh, still allocated. So we cannot use uh, whether it's empty to judge whether the connection is successful or not. Uh, or not. Actually, we need, uh, need this one connection error. If there are connection error, the connection fail, otherwise uh, it's uh, successful. Here we query the SQL statement. This SQL statement is uh, constructed from the user input, right? There are two inputs, the input username and a hash password. Where the name equals this uh, input username and the password equals this uh, hash password. We know this hash, hash password is calculated from here. From uh, line 44. The input password is a plain text password. But the database uses hash code. That's why here we, in these uh, six statements, we use the hash code. If the record it will, sh it will log in, otherwise it will show some uh, errors. Here you will log in with a wrong password. The common information you provide does not exist. Actually, the count exists. The password is not right. Okay, if it's right, we will get the result, the profile information of that user and the up and we just did for Alice's uh, account. Convert the array type to JSON format and read out. For other information, you may uh, read by yourself. You need uh, some knowledge about JavaScript, HTML, PHP, Here is used to select the profile information. If the user is admin, then you, you can find the information of all users. Okay, if you are interested in the source code, do it by yourself. Now we continue our attack. There are three subtasks. SQL injection attack from the web page. Here, for example, if we don't know 
the password of the administrator we want to log in. How could we do that? We want to learn the techniques during the lecture. Here, check the login six statements. We use a statement like this. Scroll down. Come here. How do we construct a statement without input the password? We can comment out this part, right? And we know the single quote are added by the source code. So we need to add a pound key here to comment out this password. Now you may wonder, for other websites, how could we attack? We don't know their source code. Maybe their password in, is in front of this uh, name. Then if we add a comment here, it will not work. So here is just a demonstration for the real world uh, situation, or more complicated. Okay, to add a, a comment, I mean, we don't need any password. First, we need to add a single code to pair with the single code provided by source code. Then use a comment. You may use the pound key or double dash, right? And try to log in. I get an error, I cannot log in. It says I have a SQL syntax error. So if you put this one in the source code, inside here, with a single code here, then you dash dash. What we added is like this, but uh, maybe it's better to show the constructed six statements in this uh, web page. It will give us more hint in the lab. Right? So you may uh, echo, add an echo to echo out this uh, SQL statements. But we need to modify it inside the container. Certainly, you can modify it outside the container, then copy this one to the container. So we can go inside to find that. The website container. This one. So type the first character because the first character of these two containers they are different. So a single character is sufficient. Now for the website. Inside the SQL injection, you see all the source code here. Right? We want to uh, modify this unsafe home. PHP. So you may modify it uh, outside or inside, it's up to you. I like a modified uh, outside. Here we can echo this uh, SQL statement. When I save it, then we need to copy this and save home to our container. We already know the container location is here. You can cd to that location. This uh, explanation mark and store means the parameter of the previous command is this one. It's a shortcut. Certainly you can type this uh, whole path. Right now we are inside here. What we want is a copy this uh, 
location open a new tab cd to that image double tap to we want to copy this and save um, .php docker copy to the location I just copied paste here pay attention the last character okay it's copied there you can check it double check it here use nano or any other for example less Let's command no form and use a cat. Let's scroll up to see uh, the sentence we just uh, added. Here it is. Now, if we try to log in as an admin like this, we see the statement here. Now you see why it uh, does not work. The statement is, uh, which means this comment. Didn't comment out the whole stuff. You will use uh, the second style or comment. Now you see this time uh, it worked. Right? The statements you can see on the server side what the statements look like. Here, this one comment out the password condition. And we log in as an administrator without providing the password. Now task uh, 2.2 SQL injection attack from the command line. For example, if we want to uh, find uh, address information without the password, or how could we do that? First, let's uh, get her information with her password. Suppose we know her password. Open a new tab, paste here. If this password is run, what will we get? Failed to convert. So to ACE string contains disallowed character. So we need to uh, encode this one to URL, URL. for example single code in the field you use this one M space you use this one but I think the problem is uh, this code this single code from the PDF is not recognized. So I need to type it to see the difference. But uh, they are different. There's single code and there's single code. That's why you are always suggest don't copy from PDF file. This is a get request. And the password. At the end, you see uh, these statements 
is returned by that sentence I added for other part is returned by that web page similar to this one if we are logging as Alice we can log out Login as Alice. But this is uh, what we get, and it show up in the command line. It looks like this. Here, the common information you provide does not exist. Actually, it does exist. It's only because the password is not right. This is the run password generated. So if we log in with the right password, see the Alice. And you see we get her information. Right? See uh, this table. Alice profile and show her uh, salary, email, and so on. So this is uh, the right hash code for the right password. Now we want to attack it without a uh, password. If you do it like this, you supply. Uh, Single quote, M space, pound key. You supply it like this. Do you think it worked or not? You can have a try, right? You press enter, and you see it's not work. It says the common information provided does not exist. The reason is uh, the password is not right. Is this uh, actually is this part? It's uh, not recognized. How do I know that? Actually, again, in the source code, you can echo what you get. This is not required. For example, what you get you can echo this uh, input your name and echo this input password to see what you get. The reason is uh, we need to uh, encode encode this one with uh, your error encoding or personal encoding. You can only copy this part. These three characters. A single code, empty space, and a pound key. to encode with a personal encoding here, personal encoding you can encode the manually or use an uh, online encoder, URL encoder in this uh, personal encoding you can see the single code what it is scroll down single code is personal 27 the base not show up here is uh, percent uh, 20 and that uh, pound key is percent 23 so you can do it manually or put it put your code here check this encoder right we want to encode encoder this single code m space and pound key click in encoder percent 27 percent 20 percent 23 is what we just discussed and copy this one go back here paste here like this now we press under you see we succeeded right? you see the table
Uh, this is uh, task 2.2, uh, task 2.3, we'll print a new SQL statement. We know several SQL statements can be separated with a semicolon. For example, you can try in the database. Here's the database here, for example, I want to uh, try select You can select uh, any num number, you just show a number. Here we just want to demonstrate uh, we can concatenate several SQL statements with a semicolon, separate them. Select two, press under, well, you will see two results. Two results. First one is the select, the result of select one, the second result is select two, separate with a semicolon. Task 3 asks us to append a new SQL statements, for example, uh, update statements or delete statements. Because there is a countermeasure preventing you from running two or more SQL statements in this attack. So please use the seed book or resources from the internet to figure out what this countermeasure is and describe your design discovery in the lab report. So we first try in the web page, second we try in the command line to have a look. First let's try on the web page. Here we log out Alice. How do we uh, write the statements? Again, we can uh, comment out the password, right? yeah, no matter what password it is. How do we do that? With the technique we just practiced this way. Before the comment, we use a semicolon. Then we can uh, practice another, to add another statement. For example, the update statements or delete statements. But in order to use the update statements, delete statements, you need to know the table schema, for example, the table name and those field name. Otherwise, uh, we have no way to construct the SQL statement. Here, suppose we don't know the schema, so you can use just uh, select one, something like this, to see with where you see uh, some output. Then you can log in to have a look. It says you have an error in your SQL statements. Check the menu that corresponds to your my SQL Server version or the right, uh, right syntax to use near. Do you see it? It says this uh, select one, some column, this one does not work. Actually, we know this work in, in the uh, in the MySQL command interface, you can copy this one to see actually it worked. Here, inside this uh, SQL command line interface, MySQL in the cont database container. You paste here. We have a select one, some columns over there. We know because this is a common out, this same column will not work. We need to press enter. Okay, I have a comment here. This is common out. Commented out and worked. Here you see the first statement select Alice, right? Alice is selected. The second statement select one, which means we don't have syntax error. But why we have syntax error here? All statements is verified here. It contains no syntax error.
if you use a curl command, then you, s you will get a similar result. Now, for curl, curl command, how do we uh, concatenate several, several sequence statements together? Here, this one, uh, we have, a, have one like this, right? We know this is a single quote, this uh, empty space, this is the uh, pound key. Before we encode this part, we may uh, write like this. Before then, pound key, we add a semicolon, select one semicolon. Now, again, we need to encode this part. with a percent encoding. Paste here. Encode. See, I get a percent three B for that uh, semicolon. You actually can check this. Uh, Wikipedia web page present encoding 3B semicolon here. So you can encode manually or with this one. Copy it. Go back here, we paste here. Did I miss a pound key? Pound key is percent uh, 23. Right? It's right, I didn't miss that uh, pound key. Now we press enter. Here again, you see uh, it says SQL syntax error check its manual. What is the uh, Syntax error is here. It still says here. So we we got identical result as we try on the web page. So the reason we need to check the source code. How the query is executed. Here we scroll down to find connect to the database. Get a connection. Then we use this one, com query SQL. So can we execute multiple uh, SQL statements with this method, the query? Actually, the reason is it cannot execute uh, more than one SQL statement. You may find more details from here. On our course uh, homepage, web page, component web page, check this one. My SQL query and my SQL uh, mod uh, query. There is a method mod query. So this one you can execute uh, multiple SQL statements, mod query. Perform one or more queries on the database. Now for this uh, query, Perform a query on the database. So that, that's the reason. So if you want to execute multiple queries to make the attack work, you need to modify the code to change this query to mod query. You change it to mod query. Then it will work. And let's save it. It's called a mod query. Again, we need to copy this source code and save home my PHP. Into the container here. We already have it here. Just bring up the command and do it again. Now we can try the attack. 
try this attack. Press login. Now, you check this, uh, it didn't say error, right? but we don't uh, see any result. So what's the problem? You check this, uh, this one. We have the result, but it uh, converts the select uh, return result into an array type. For the second one, we just select one, and that select one we don't have these uh, fields. So the code, there, there is a problem happening here. That's why we we didn't see the output, even though this succeeded. Because it didn't say error. But if there is error, we will see the error as we we saw it before. We will see this one, and we didn't see this one, which means it succeeded. It just uh, didn't show up. Okay, we complete all the tasks in lab 11. In our last lab, we will do task 3 and uh, task 4.